Would you please go on the record with the American people? Did you sexually assault Tara Reid? No, it is not true. I'm saying unequivocally, it never, never happened. And it didn't. It never happened. Do you remember her? Do you remember any, any types of complaints that she might have made? I don't remember any type of complaint she <clears throat> may have made. It was 27 years ago. And uh, I don't remember, nor does anyone else that I'm aware of. And uh, the fact is that I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember any complaint ever having been made. So Tara Reid made that allegation, and it was essentially ignored by most of the mainstream media. They had the story for months, but they did not pursue it. Tara Reid ultimately wrote a book. Let's put it on the screen, please. It's called Left Out, When the Truth Doesn't Fit In. Uh, Tara Reid joins us right now. Tara, welcome to Newsmax. Thanks for being here. How are you? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's really good to be on your show. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, one thing I noticed about that interview, uh, mm -hmm. Mika asked Joe, do you remember her? He didn't answer that. He just said he remembered no complaint. And I was just curious. I don't think Joe Biden has ever been asked, does he remember? And I think he does remember you. That's my takeaway because he skipped the question. Did you notice that when it happened? I did. I noticed a couple of things. Yeah. So let's go through it. Um, you made this allegation. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing that I am really appalled by, the left wing media embrace Christine Blasey Ford, yet they shunned correct. you, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that and, is? And, and you know, I, I want to make it clear, you know, I, I was a lifelong Democrat um, and I am no longer. Um, I'm not a Republican, so I want to make that clear to your viewers. I'm an independent, so I'll vote, you know, my heart. But this was... Um, heart-wrenching for me as a lifelong Democrat to be thrown aside. I believe that the elite Democrat party um, uses the Me Too as a shield. And um, meanwhile, the hypocrisy is they're actually uplifting um, predators, sexual predators, and not only uplifting, but they're also enabling them and rewarding them with more power. I mean, Joe Biden has now advanced to the most powerful person in the Western world. And then you have, of course, the allegations that are coming forward about uh, Governor Cuomo, soon to be former Governor Cuomo, if he resigns or, you know, once that's happened. So regarding Joe Biden, now that he's president, uh, we're seeing a lot mm -hmm. more of him. Well, kind of. Um, has it, is it different for you? Now, Joe Biden, we showed he denies your allegations. Uh, but how has your life changed now that he's been in the Oval Office? I've heard of, you know, folks... Uh, you can be traumatized all over again. Has this happened to you? It's been devastating. It's been very re-traumatizing. I can't really put it into words what it feels like to hear his name over and over and over again, except that I try to turn off the news a lot. I, I try to stay connected, but I pick and choose how I do that. And, um, you know, I think it's very important that I um, remain connected to my country and to what's going on. But yeah, definitely it's it's taken its toll. When I came out, um, you know, Joe Biden and the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, weaponized the media against me. I was smeared, attacked, social media trolled, threatened. My life was threatened. My daughter and I were stalked. And um, the way the tone was set but was by the New York Times. And um, I don't know if you're aware, but my attorney filed something with the New York Times, a demand for correction of the record. And also um, some, you know, some something to address the fact that they accidentally uh, posted my social security number in the headline of the New York Times first article. So the New York Times ultimately did the story, their version of it, and so mm -hmm. did the Washington Post. They had the story Correct. for a long time, and yes. uh, they kind of held their nose. They were reluctant to do it. Contra compare that to Christine Blasey Ford. Not only did the Washington Post do the story, but congressional hearings were held. We have her, mm -hmm. uh, we saw with the hand up, you know, the whole country watched. Mm -hmm. And I noticed something else, that she seemed to have a lot of support, a lot of lawyers, a lot of aides. Another photo, she's yeah. kind of surrounded by all these helpers. When you came yes. forward with your story, who was with you? Who was by your side? Well, 
No one. I mean, I came forward, but there were six other women, seven other women, actually, that came forward before me about um, sexual harassment. So I thought I was coming forward, you know, with them. Um, but people are very afraid of Joe Biden's power. And I think that's one of the issues that has kept people from coming forward. Even one of my cooperating witnesses is terrified, especially the way I've been ripped apart. Um, and you notice that Blasey Ford, Dr. Ford, was not treated in the same way at all. The Me Too movement was behind her. Celebrities were behind her. Um, everyone rallied. Kamala Harris made a very vehement statement um, that he was not qualified. Yeah. And now she's Joe Biden's vice president. So, so I remember, I think yeah. Sports Illustrated gave, gave her a Woman of the Year award. It was just over the top with the awards and that kind of thing. Now, unlike Christine Blasey Ford, who could not establish any kind of connection to Judge Kavanaugh, you actually could establish that you worked for Joe Biden. You were there. That was not disputed. Now, there was a phone call made to Larry King, reportedly by your mother. I, I want to play this clip, and then we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm wondering what um, uh, a, a staffer uh, would do, do besides go to the press in Washington. My daughter has just left there uh, after working for a prominent senator and could not get through with her problems at all. And the only thing she could have done was go to the press, and she chose not to do it out of respect for him. Was that your mother? Yeah, I always get emotional when I hear it because my mother died of a rare form of throat cancer. So she lost a lot of her ability to talk like she normally did. And she had a beautiful voice. Um, she was, you know, it's it was kind of like she reached across space and time to, to give me a hug and say, I'm here. Um, that was a really um, momentous moment to hear that call again. At the time, I'm sad to say I was mad at my mother because I was so scared of Joe Biden. I was mad she even made the phone call. She was trying to get the courage to, you know, say what happened. But, you know, of course, she she uh, just said what she said. And um, there was really no mechanism or platform or way to come forward then. And, you know, I was told quite clearly by Evelyn Lieberman's had a, an assistant press secretary in Joe Biden's office. And he and I had told reporters in 2019 about this, but he had told me when I filed a sexual harassment report, he said, you know, we will effing destroy you. And they did three times. Um, you know, I, my career ended, um, for lack of another word, um, in 93, I was forced to resign. I was told I wasn't a good fit after I filed the sexual harassment complaint. Um, and, you know, it, I was not able to get another job in DC. And then in 2019, when the other women bravely came forward, I really felt it was time for me to say something. My daughter was grown and, um, and I thought I could go to Time's Up for assistance okay. and Time's Up did not help me. So before you got here in the earlier part of the mm -hmm. show, I played the, um, your allegation uh, as you described it to Megyn Kelly. Um, but if you don't mind, could you tell us again, um, what do you say Joe Biden did to you? You were working on his staff, and I understand um, you were performing an errand, and you say something yes. terrible happened. Yes, I was bringing him um, his gym bag, and um, it happened. And I'd, I'd really rather not um, go into the details. Um, I've gone into it at length at the Megyn Kelly interview, so I'd just like to refer back to that. Um, but it was it was a very traumatizing um, assault. And what he said to me after the assault was even more traumatizing. Um, you know, he, uh, uh, after I had pulled away and everything, and he had said, come on, man, I heard you liked me. And he had said different various things, and one of them is not suitable for, you know, um, this broadcast, but he said certain things to me. Um, he said he got angry with me when I pulled away and he obviously I wasn't going to go off with him. And he said, you know, you're you mean nothing to me. You're nothing. Yeah, that's. And um, he walked away. And I think that as much as the assault, those words haunted me for a long time. And the next thing I remember is my whole body was shaking and I was in the hallway and I was trying to, you know, just figure out a way home and and the rest, you know, you know about. So we it was saw, very, very disheartening. We just showed a picture of you. I think this is your ID mm -hmm. to Capitol Hill, yeah. signed by the Sergeant mm -hmm. of Arms. It's an official identification. So yeah. I do remember, I heard, I believe that 
you made a report at the time uh, to some sort of HR office, uh, but it didn't go anywhere, and you didn't specify in writing the details of what happened? Um, well, it was more like an intake form. And, you know, people have always asked me that, but it was very intimidating. I went to this outside office and it was a very big step. So I went ahead and wrote just the basics. And I remember I had to get, um, I had to give the name of someone and I gave my cooperating witness that I had told her about the assault and whatnot as well. And she remembers waiting on her because she was back at college at that time, waiting for the phone call. Um, you know, but they never called, yeah. but I, um, filled out like a form. It was one page and they were going to get back to me. And then there would be like, they would talk with me in person. And that's where I wanted to talk about the assault. I went into a little bit of the harassment, but very little as I recall, I believe and, um, I'm not even sure because back then we didn't use that vernacular as much. It was used much less. Right. So I'm, I, I think I just put the circumstances down and talked about feeling uncomfortable and things like that. So did you, uh... Did the FBI ever come and talk to you about this after you made your allegations last year public? Uh, I believe they got involved in the Christine Blasey Ford allegations. Did they ever go to you? No. In fact, what I was told when I made, because I made a police report um, this um, last year in 2020, and I said, well, I wasn't sure if I could make a police report, but I'm getting death threats and I want something on record. I want a mechanism to, for safety because after coming forward, I was getting so many death threats. And the Capitol Police, um, or I mean, the, excuse me, the Metro Police took the report and because it was outside the statute of limitations, um, you know, it remains yeah. just like a report court and not active, but they have it. Um, I went to the FBI for help because my computer was hacked. I was threatened. My life was threatened, but they have never interviewed me about Joe Biden, only the Metro police that I went to. Uh, I don't have much more time. Why didn't you make the allegation? I know you, you told, you talked about what happened in the early nineties, but later say 2008, 2012, he's vice president. He's running for vice president. Why not back then? There was no way to do that back then as far as a mechanism. And my daughter was little um, and in school, I just didn't feel strong enough. I did tell a friend who's been on the record about me telling her about the assault and how it made me feel. And at the time I, I voted for Obama. I was a very hardcore Democrat and he happened to be on the ticket. I wanted to find a way to come forward, but my daughter was, you know, in junior high and going into high school. I just, I couldn't. And, yeah. and I didn't know who to talk to. There was really, it's really hard. Like people say, why don't you come forward? It's not that easy. And you saw it took over 36 days for my story to get to the media. Um, you know, it takes, a, it's, it's, it takes effort. And if you're just a civilian, it's difficult to get your story forward. I want to put your book up again. It's called Left Out, okay. When the Truth Doesn't Fit In. So Tara Reid, you've written your book. These allegations uh, have been public for little less than a year now. Um, mm -hmm. He's president. What do you want to happen? What can happen? Where, where do we go from here? Well, I, I've been talking in general about rape culture in America and just not and holding powerful men accountable regardless of their party, regardless of who they are. Um, but I've always said I would go under oath if there was a congressional hearing and investigation, I would go under oath. So I guess we'll leave it in the hands of legislatures, of the legislator, if they want to, uh, you know, bring forward an investigation against Joe Biden. But in my opinion, he's not qualified. Well, that's what they did for uh, Christine Blasey Ford and Judge Kavanaugh. And a president mm -hmm. is a lot more important than an associate justice of the Supreme Court. If they did it then. They probably should have done it last year, and they probably should still do it now. Tara yes. Reid, we thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. You bet. Have a good night. You bet. Take care, you too, and we'll be right back. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.